Halo Infinite multiplayer lead leaves 343, a Forge Council member speaks up about the progress of Halo Infinite's Forge mode, as well as new content coming to ranked play for Season 2. Do you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything coming around with Halo, especially with the Season 2 content information, make sure to tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So yes, you heard me right. The lead of multiplayer has recently left 343. Andrew Witz, which you actually have seen him in a few video documentaries talking about Halo Infinite's development, said, Today is my last day at 343 Industries. It's been an honor leading the multiplayer design team over these years. Thank you to at Halo fans for all your feedback over the years. We made this game for you. I'm going to take some time off to relax and recharge, but I'm excited. What's next? Which, seeing this announcement, along with some other kind of announcements of some major people leaving 343, like Wendell Hoyo, who was the Sandbox lead, of course we've seen like Tim Longo leave, and various other people, for, and like Patrick Wren, who was another multiplayer lead leaving 343, people are kind of going like, okay, what's going on here? Like, too many things are happening all at once here. And I've actually seen Andrew get some flack on Twitter for leaving 343 from the community. Of course, like, we're the community of Halo fans. We think that working on Halo is, like, the ultimate job ever of all time. Why would anybody want to leave? But, you know, that's, you know, some people's journey doesn't end with Halo. Another former 343 employee that worked on the multiplayer talked about this as well, kind of hitting up Andrew as well as a retweet saying that people will never know the amount of passion, dedication, hard work, effort, and hours this man put into Halo Infinite to make it the game the best that it can be. Thank you, Wits, for everything you brought to the multiplayer team, and I cannot wait to see your incredible bright future. So, like I said, guys, like, it might seem kind of like weird to seeing like all these people leaving Halo, right? Because like probably for you, me, and everyone who's watching this video, like why would you want to leave Halo? Like that's the ultimate job, right? Well, like again, that's not the ultimate job for some people. He might have gotten a better opportunity or maybe more money or more power when it comes to development cycles or things like that. There's a lot of things that uh, play into like people's decisions to get a different kind of job. Of course, it's a lot easier to get some clicks when you say things are falling apart, see people are jumping ship when that's probably not the case. The biggest concern is when you see developers leaving a company without having another job already secured. That's when you see issues with the game that they're currently being developed on where you see people just leaving and not having any other kind of job to fall back on we saw this a lot with anthems development with a lot of bioware employees leaving during that because of artistic differences and this could have been some of the issues with some of the other people that left 343 before the release of halo infinite though i'd say yo the game that we got for the most part for halo infinite is still pretty dang fun that's the main difference here you want to look at when it comes to these departures from 343 is like are they going to another job if they're leaving a job and not having anything secured that's when you start seeing some issues happening, but that doesn't seem to be the case with Halo Infinite's development. As soon as we get any information on who's going to replace Andrew Witz when it comes to being a multiplayer lead, who's going to be the lead of the Sandbox team, I'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel as it is a developing story. Now we finally have some Forge news to talk about with you guys, a member of the Forge Council, which if you don't know what that is, the Council is a community group of people from the Halo community who are very prominent within the Forge side of things, have been working on Forge with 343 for probably I think years now at this point and they've been you know pretty quiet about it for the most part but Ar Arthur Bloodshot here who's a friend of the channel by the way uh, actually said something about like what to look forward to about possible flighting when it comes to Forge saying as a member of the Forge Council I can say that there is good progress on Halo Infinite's Forge to the point that there will be public testing for this year more details to come in the future which I think I might have to hit up Arthur for a little bit of extra information for you guys. Also, it's super cool to hear that it's going to be public testing happening with Forge. That's something I'm very excited about. That's definitely a feature that we'll need flighting for. Like, we don't really need flighting when it comes to, like, weapon balancing and, like, these random fixes that we get. You know, something big that needs to be, like, grand test tested on a grand scale so we fully understand, like, what the needs of the community need for the feature, much like Forge. And so that's why they have this council in there, which these guys, I know these guys who are part of the Forge council, they are a very good group of guys. I trust their judgments way more than my judgment when it comes to Forge. And if Arthur here says that things are going pretty well for Halo Infinite's Forge, things are looking on par to be released for season three, which would probably be around like August, September timeframe. And if we get Forge, that definitely means we'll get some extra game modes tied to it as well. Game modes like Griffball, Infection are heavily tied 
guide to forge creation that have new experiences and game most specifically designed around maps that people can create in forge that's why we don't see these modes in halo infinite right now because if you just played infection on like bazaar it probably wouldn't really be that fun but if you play infection on a designed map in forge then you got my attention. Again, once we get any more information about Halo Infinite's Forge mode, you guarantee I'll let you guys know here on the channel. I did upload a video previously talking about all the leaks that have been going on, and uh, I can't really show and talk about a whole lot of them but from what I've seen online because I don't want my channel getting taken down. Most of the stuff's getting uploaded on burner accounts, uh, but if you just look up on Reddit and Twitter, you can find some stuff or just watch the video that I posted about it, talking about how some of these changes that they're doing for Forge are pretty freaking awesome and going to be the best Forge mode we've ever had in a Halo game. Along with the issue of content being rather slim with Halo Infinite right now, especially on the competitive side of things when it comes to ranked play, that's which is what I mainly like to play when it comes to playing Halo Infinite, and Tashi, the head of HCS, came in with some really great news saying the new map Catalyst and the return of King of the Hill, which does have some changes that he's mentioned in the last blog update, which we talked about in a previous video that we uploaded here on the channel, saying that uh, they will go right into the HCS Season 2 when dropping May 3rd. So we're going to get new modes, and new maps when it comes to competitive Halo, which I am all for that. I do love playing ranked Halo. It's probably my favorite version of Halo I like to play. It always has been, really. And knowing that Catalyst is designed to be a rather competitive style map has me excited that this map's gonna be a very fun, well-balanced type of map that's gonna be made to be you know, taken seriously on. Though I would agree that we definitely do need some more social type of maps when it comes to playing Halo Infinite, as the majority of the player base are social players and they just wanna jump in and play some Team Slayer, maybe with some wacky map mechanics or something like that. I hope that Catalyst has something to do with more of kind of like a interactive kind of element to the map to kind of make it so that like players can like force of a battle in the game their way or if they can. Like, something like something like we had with like ascensions remake back in Halo 2 anniversary where you had like that bubble that kind of popped up in the middle of the map that's really cool things like that i think would be a great like ad addition to these maps because they do feel a little kind of stagnant when it comes to playing it on them but of course you can always just turn it off i'm sure and that's probably what they might do for hcs and maybe social version you have the ma interactive map element but so far really great to hear that catalyst will be added into the hcs playlist because it's getting stale now there is also another map that we're getting for Season 2, this is Catalyst. The other map that we're going to get is Breaker. Now all we have is this bit of concept art, which is a bit concerning on my end, because if Season 2 is going to be releasing in like two months, and you only have concept arts of a map, that's kind of concerning in my opinion, but this could be just some form of a teaser. But this something is really cool, and it's a really great thing that this is a much more atmospherically different looking map. It's something that's very much needed. When looking at this image, it actually reminded me a lot of the map Geonosis from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, Geonosis here has a very similar kind of color palette, kind of sepia kind of style to it, which is definitely unique to Halo Infinite when it comes to the map pool that we have right now. Like, I love the atmosphere of this map. It also plays very well. I played a lot of this back when Battlefront 2 went free to play a little bit on the uh, Epic Game servers there. And guys, like, this map looks so cool. If we can have something anywhere close to this when it comes to Halo Infinite, it would definitely help liven up the BTB playlist because obviously we only have those three maps. And though they all have their own visual style, they are kind of cohesive or something like this or with a different kind of color palette and different kind of geometry and geology with the map certainly would be a great breath of fresh air that's very needed for the content of Halo Infinite because I know a lot of people are kind of underwhelmed when it comes to just one BTB map and also just one arena map though since we're going to be getting a new map every three months it does make a little more sense that you have like just one or two maps kind of be launched every season but if we can have a map that looks like Geonosis here from Star Wars Battlefront 2 but also be Halo now you got my attention for sure now the last thing I want to point out here in this video guys from the season 2 development update that after a deeper dive I saw one really interesting thing that was the weapon the Spartan on the left is holding or if you take a nice close look at it it looks a little familiar I mean to me it kind of looks like a DMR but without the scope on it for some odd reason but like the long barrel that's attached to it the side scope thing that's on it as well the rail system the shape of the weapon generally does look like a DMR so could we get that DMR coming back into Halo Infinite I mean that would be pretty exciting after doing some research, I looked at seeing like what other weapons within Halo have a similar kind of arch style to what we just saw within that picture, and the Halo Reach DMR is the closest thing I could find. Obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one recreation, but it just sparks my interest going, okay, 
Are we getting this weapon back? You can also even see the DMR in a book that's coming out later this year. It actually got delayed, which is the Rubicon Protocol. This is the art cover to the book right here. And if you look at the Spartan here in the left side, you see they're definitely holding a DMR, but that's much more of a Halo 5 style DMR. And the DMR that we look like that we have with this art style that in the concept art looks far more reminiscent of the Halo Reach one, but maybe with a mix of the Halo 5 one, which is quite interesting. Now, I mean, obviously they basically brought back the Halo Reach assault rifle. I know it's not exactly the exact same model, but it's effectively the Halo Reach assault rifle back in the Halo. So could he be doing the same thing with the DMR? I mean, we just have to keep an eye on it for sure. As most of these are developing stories, guys, as we get more information about Forge and Season 2 content, you know I'm going to share with you guys on the channel as soon as possible here. So if you guys want to stay up to date, make sure you tap subscribe. If you're new to the channel and missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I've got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.